The theme for today, she shall be called woman. Women's Day 2024. The power and the place of women. And um, thinking about this, I'm like, okay, so the power and the place of women. She shall be called woman. A lot of us think it is God that called us women. It is not God. It is a man. Man named us. Adam called us woman. But to understand, to come to a place of understanding for each and every one of us, male and female, we need to go back to the origin. We need to go back to the beginning. Because, like it is popularly said, the, when you don't understand the use of a thing, the tendency to abuse it is very high. So when we come to a place of understanding, and as believers, we come to a place of understanding from the word, from God's perspective, then he puts things in place. Hallelujah. So today we are doing, today is the origin story of the woman. Which happens to be the origin story for the man. And so we'll be moving through the Bible. We're going to go to Genesis. This is how we're going to understand this today. We're going to go to the beginning. Genesis, largely. Then we're going to see the New Testament. Because Jesus is our example. Are we together on that? So we are going to be moving to the New Testament before we arrive at our conclusion. And we're going to be doing a lot of scripture reading. So bear with me. But please look into your Bibles. Look into your Bibles as we do so. Jesus came to restore the order that was broken and to empower us to live in the reality of the true order of how it was meant to be in the beginning that is what jesus came to do so that is where we are going to end up today so i'd like for us to start with the first scripture we are going to run through is genesis 1 26 to 28 i know these are familiar scriptures genesis 1 26 to 28 then God said, I'm reading from the New King James, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, them, male and female, not just multitude of men, male and female. God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. The next scripture I'd like us to read is... Um, We'll go to the fifth chapter of Genesis. Fifth chapter of Genesis. And I will just read the first two verses. The first two verses. He says, this is the book of the genealogy of Adam. In the day that God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. He created them male and female and blessed them and called them mankind in the day they were created hallelujah hallelujah so we have two scriptures in the mouth of two or three witnesses a word is established so we have two witnesses now so let's go to the third one genesis chapter 2 which is where we'll come for a bit genesis chapter 2 15 to 25 just want the word of god to speak to us today 15 to 25. Then the Lord took, Lord God took the man. This is what we have read in the other two 
verses being unpacked now. Then the Lord God took the man, put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. God gave him assignment. There was a purpose for which he was created. There was a purpose for which God wanted man on earth. And the first one that came out, this is what you guys are supposed to do. From the decision I had made, this is what you people are supposed to do. The let us, this was the product or the result of the decision of the Trinity. Let us make man in our image and likeness and let them have dominion. The Lord God took the man, gave him, put him in the garden to tend and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. And the Lord God said, it was not, there was nobody else to say. It was not the man that said, I, I'm, I need somebody. But the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him, suitable to him. Out of, like him, out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he will call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was his name. Isn't it odd that first of all, God goes, it is not good. He had given him work to do. And now goes, it is not good for man to be alone. And you will think that right after that, he will get into the process of just here. This is the person that should stay with you, help you. He starts to go producing animals. And he brings them to Adam. To name them. There is power in our tongue. There is power in our tongue. That's just by the way. We are creative beings. Whatever you name, God may accept, you will accept it. Whatever you call your child, whatever you call your wife, Whatever you call your husband, whatever you call your business, whatever you call the people who work with you, that was its name. Or oh, that is their name. Verse 20. So Adam gave names to all cattle, the birds of the air, every beast of the field. He said, but for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. Even dog that is called man's best friend was not comparable to Adam. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of a man. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of a man. I want to read it in um, the same verse in the Passion Translation. Then Adam said, at last, one like me, her bones were formed from my bones and her flesh from my flesh. This one will be called woman, for she was taken from man. Woman, the man with the womb. The man with the womb. Finally, finally. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. And they were not ashamed. Now, from these scriptures, we agree that we are created, all of us, male, female, in God's image and in, like, in God's likeness. Someone might wonder, so why is this so important? Everybody knows. 
But if you grow up in a society and we are in a predominant, predominantly male dominated society, even though people keep saying now the women are more, the women are more, the women, our culture, society, most places you go to. So to some people, it is, it is strange. They feel everybody should know that it's God that created us. But some girls, some women have grown up or some families have even in the actions, you've just been communicated to that you are not important. You are not as important as a man. You are, you are, it's like in, the woman is the second class citizen. The woman is, um, the, the woman is, is, is not necessary. She's only useful for childbearing. You are just necessary because we shall need your womb so that our legacy can continue. Our lineage, ba, thank you. Our lineage can continue. But from the beginning, we see that God blessed both male and female. God empowered both to succeed in what they were created to do. They both had roles to play in his desire for fruitfulness, for multiplication, for domination. And he empowered them both. For each one, for the role they had to play, he created them what they needed. The man does not have the womb. The woman has the womb. The woman is fashioned in such a way that she would cooperate with the man to, co to do what God has called them to do. It was God who saw that the man needed the woman. And that was why she was created. God is a God of purpose. So if there was no need... For a woman, I can assure, I bet you, you will all be men sitting down here. If that was all God needed to achieve purpose. But he himself said, mm -mm, you alone cannot fulfill my divine plan. And when I speak of this, we will hear it. We are listening in different contexts. We are listening for our marriage. We are listening for a family. We are listening for our, in, in the workplace. Because there is something that each of us, each gender, contributes. And that is how God planned it. Hallelujah. The Passion Translation, that, that same declaration when God said he saw the man that needed help. He said, then Yahweh God said, it is not good for man to be alone. Therefore, I will fashion a suitable partner to be his help and strength a suitable partner to be his help and strength men be honest especially those of you who are married are there times that all you just want to hear from your wife is that encouraging word is there someone who will be honest enough to show with it? just a, a show of hands no you guys raise it up well so those of them who are not yet married they'll know that this is why God called us Sam are you raising your hand okay it is so true. It is so true. There are men who have gone on to conquer the world. And all the, all the world saw was the men making waves. There was somebody behind when that man did not believe in himself. There was just that one woman that people would have thought she was stupid. What are you still doing with this kind of selfish bloke? But she stood with him. She told him, you can do it. He failed many times. It almost broke him, but she's like, I believe in you. If nobody else was now, I'm here. We will do it. God knew. And that was why he sent her. He fashioned her from his rib. And I thought that was interesting because God could have taken a bone from anywhere. You know, you can survive without a rib or two. Are we aware of that? 
Okay, men may not know it, but women, we know, because there are some procedures that people, they want this hourglass thing, so they take out, like, the last two ribs. Because it really doesn't, not really doing much. You know? But God took out from that man something that had his essence. It was like Adam couldn't birth Eve, but God had to, okay, now you can see that every, all of these things are not suitable for you. They are not comparable to you. The lion has his lioness. Every animal had his own partner. You, your own, this is your own. And she's, she's like you. She's coming from you. He took a bone that had everything. Call it DNA, call it code, call it the essence. But it was Adam in his pre-fall state. Note, we are dealing with Adam that was in his, at his best. And when he saw her, he knew. He said, God has taken from me. This one is my own. This one is like me. This with this one, this is my teammate. This is the one I am meant to do things with. Hallelujah. And finally, what we also see from the beginning is that God called us good. He looked at man. He looked at woman. And he said, good. I don't care what anybody has said to you. And truly, it doesn't matter. It is what God says about you that matters. And God, when he created you, when he was putting you together in your mother's womb, and you came out and he looked at you and he said, good. You may have a child that is challenged. Look at that child that God permitted to live and tell him or her, good. You are good. You may not think they understand you because some may not get it cognitively, but you are speaking to their spirit. You are good. You are created of God. He sent you here. God knows you are here. You didn't just show up. And he said you are good. Hallelujah. So like I said, let's now go to the fall. Because something happened that changed that order. And that is why we are where we are today. My brethren, do not fall asleep on me. I don't want to see eyes closed, please. Thank you. Because men, you didn't just come here to support us. You came to hear a word. And the Lord is speaking to you right now. So let's just be attentive. Let's all go to Genesis 3. I'm not going to read it um, verse by verse. We all know the story. Genesis 3, 1 to 20. So I'm not going to read the, the whole, the entire story. The only thing, um, this part, just call, I'll just point our attention to some things. When the whole thing happened, if, and that is it, women, our, our curiosity. We have, a, we have like um, most women, because I'm very, very careful with stereotypes. There are some things that I do or a way I think, and my husband will look at me and tell me, you, 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 that's the way a man will behave. And I'm like, I'm sorry. It is just my, the way I'm wired. So sometimes stereotypes have finished us. There's a way a woman would think, and they'll tell you, calm it down. Don't you know you're a woman? So I'm very, very careful with that. But if, let's, think, let's look at it this way. Which woman will have food now and will not give her husband? Eh? Which, 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 babe? Even as women, you have something. You enter office. Even husband, you don't have. That tendency to want to, you know, you found one place in the market where they sell those, uh, you know, that when you wear it, all of us look the same. Will you keep it to yourself? We don't. We share it. 
I was at a conference yesterday and the lady said the, the enemy knows the power that women have in our communication, in our leave, a, leave women word of mouth, we can evangelize the good and the evil men do it too men do it too they just try and keep straight face and behave like they don't talk they talk, we all do but let's look at it this way that Eve, just, Eve was just being who she had been created and called to be and she gave to her Diami and Diami ate. Was Diami not aware of the fact that you should not eat of the tree of good and evil? Okay, but that's not where we are going today. So it was when it was the responses that broke that that for me I think just it was just heartbreaking because that's that sin had been introduced. Disobedience to God's order had brought in sin. Everybody collected that day. Diami collected, Eve collected, serpent collected, everybody. The sad thing is the earth itself collected. Because man was created to dominate. God had given everything to man. So everything under us fell under that curse that our disobedience and sin brought. When sin took over, abdication of responsibility entered. Leadership flew out the window. It was the serpent. Is the woman, not my wife, by the way. It is the woman you gave me. Promptly threw the woman under the bus. I don't know, I don't know, I was okay until you brought her. See now. None of them bothered asking for forgiveness. Nobody thought of saying, God, we are sorry. Adam couldn't, because self had entered. Sin had entered, self has entered. The man was not thinking of shielding his wife and taking responsibility and saying, I'm the man, I'm, 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 I'm the leader. She came off bringing her like this. I'm saying, God, I'm sorry. I did, I, I ate it. I, I took it. Then let her come out and say, no, it's not him. It's not, let, let God see two of them fighting to, 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 to make peace, to, to make things all right. It wasn't there. It was still God. I wonder if Adam ever listened to Eve's opinion after that. Or if her voice just became, mm -mm, please, 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 the last time you spoke, see where I am now. I've been digging this ground since nothing is coming out and it's all your fault. When you people talk, I, I don't even know what people are saying. And, and that is how most of our men have, have been raised, sadly sadly so this like i said today this origin story is all our origin story shame anger guilt blame game call it conflict everything entered their relationships death was also introduced and you could see that even in the if you read further about their children cain abel there was some lame guy too that was busy he had gone to kill but just fight everywhere because man had missed the mark and so the order had been broken and it is still happening that damage is still going on the team of two the team of two that were supposed to dominate together multiply together succeed together comfort each other we're now denied the blessing that each one could give because of what had happened. And our society, our culture, most times reinforces it. But we are believers, we are Christians. So we are going to look into what Jesus, our example, 
How did he treat women? What, did, what place, what role did the women play in his ministry? And so that will give us a picture of the restored order and where we all are meant to be. Not just as women, but also as men. Hallelujah. So, we're going to be looking at Jesus' responses. Now we're moving to the restored order in Christ. So we're going to be going to the New Testament. Matthew 19, we're going to look at uh, something Jesus said to the Pharisees. So they had come to meet him. In trying to test him, and they were like, eh, that Moses said we can give our women, we can divorce them for any reason. So it, it, just, it just makes me think of how things could have been going from, from Eve's period coming down. We can divorce women for any reason, and it still happens. I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you, don't finish. That's all. Pack your things and go. For men, it's so easy to just throw out. If you stress me, I'll, 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 I'll divorce you. Not understanding that you are killing yourself. When they spoke, Jesus said to them, He said, Have you not read that He who made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh one flesh so then he said they are no longer two they are one what god has joined together therefore let no man separate and jesus let them know that it is out of the hardness of your heart that's why some of these things had to be introduced is that's not god's heart that's not the original plan jesus was taking them back to the original plan Jesus is still taking us back to the original plan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was amused uh, to hear what the disciples said to him when he had finished. You know, he still went further and said a few things about, you know, against divorce. And his disciples said, Talk, if such is the case of a man with his wife, it is better not to marry. I was like, how selfish, as in the height of selfishness. So in their own time, the joy of they could enter marriage knowing that they could check out. In fact, they won't leave. They'll just tell you, come and be going. Serve high certificate and feel like, feel justified that they have done okay. Let's see how Jesus responded to the woman that was bound for 18 years. That's in Luke. Luke 13. Luke 13. This, that story is in um, 11 to 13 and then verse 16. So the... He saw the woman, the spirit of infirmity had kept her bound for 18 years. And the part I want you to see is verse 12. This woman was not the one that went to Jesus. He said, but when Jesus saw her, this was on a day of synagogue, on a Sunday, Jesus was the one who saw her. He called her to him. He called her to him and he said, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. Jesus is still calling women to himself today. He's still calling women to himself today. He's still calling men. And when the society said, Why are you shifting the program for this woman? They can come for miracle on another day. Why are, you, why are you shifting things, Jesus? Why are you disturbing the order of things? And he said to them, you will do this, you will, you will give attention to your car. You will give attention to your business. You will shift things for things that concern you. So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, think of it for 18 years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day. A number of us are surrounded by women. You know they are going through things. In fact, one is in your house. She's your wife. You are the reason why she's going through hell. 
you are her captive. Abi, you are her captor, in fact. No, men, I didn't come to bash you people today. Like I said, we need to understand this origin story is all our story. But Jesus' eyes were opened to see trouble, to see bondage. And he was, his eyes were not just open to see bondage. He was ready to fight it. He was ready to loose the captive and let them go free. Men, you stay in the house. Sometimes you see the way your wives treat your nannies or treat other people. And you keep quiet and say, this one now, woman, what matter? No. No. That's not why God called you. Two heads can't run a home. There has to be a leader. In, in your, every organization, there is, there is a head on you. And the role that that person is playing at that point is leadership. And as a leader, you have to take responsibility for everyone God has put around you. For a woman who is not married, you are the one standing in that role. For a man who is not married, same thing. But if God has given you the privilege to be a leader, you can't turn your eyes away from people in bondage, from infirmity, from things that are wrong. That's not what Jesus did. Speak up. Don't bury your head in the sand. What happens in the house does not concern you. That's that's not how God, that's not what it was supposed to be in the beginning. And Jesus has come so that that order can be restored. Amen. Amen. There was another woman in John 8, 3 and 5. That one was the one that they brought before Jesus, John 8. And they said, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. As if she was doing it all by herself. And they dragged her. The law says she should be stoned. And truly, some societies look at women like they are the tempters. We would be all right if people were not here to tempt us. I would not have fallen into sin. It was that, that woman. It was that girl. I wouldn't have raped her. If she was not wearing that skirt, she should have worn another color. She should have been longer. And they dropped her before the Lord. Like I said, it is Jesus' responses that will pull our attention today. All he said to them, if you, you're, if you are without sin, Please, carry the first stone. Stone her. One by one from the oldest. Because maybe sometimes age gives you sense. The riches and age when you just know that all that para you were para when you were younger, there's no need. So they were the ones to just first pack themselves and go. And he looked up at her and said, where are your accusers? Has no one condemned you? She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. He didn't just say, I don't condemn you. Yeah, be going. Maybe next time they would have stoned her before he knew about it. But he, he told her, go and sin no more. And in those words, empowered her. Empowered her to also live the life that he knew she could live. Jesus is still doing the same with us today. He came to restore order. Where society, culture, religion, and law see women as unworthy, temptresses, useless, only good for carrying children, they don't think well, and the cause of sin as it was during the fall. That it is the woman's fault. If it was not for the woman, we will not be where we are. 
Jesus treated women with respect. Jesus showed that every man, male and female, should take responsibility for their actions. That there should be no abdicating of responsibility. If you did it, own it with your full chest. That is what Jesus came to restore. I'd like us to go to the book of Luke. Luke 8, 1 to 3. That is a cardinal scripture for glowing pearls. And because Jesus mm. understood the power of women, that was why he also had them in his ministry. They followed him. He was, they were not part of the 12 disciples. But the Bible says there that it says, And certain women who had been healed of evil spirits infirmities, Mary Magdalene, out of whom had come out seven demons, Joanna, Susanna, many others who provided for him, who provided for their ministry from their substance. Luke 23, 55. Now, Jesus at Luke 23, Jesus had been crucified. These women followed Jesus. Women followed Jesus when he was ministering, followed the disciples, followed him. They followed him till the end. Followed him when he was crucified. Followed him after he died. He says, the women who had come with him from Galilee followed after. And they observed the tomb and how his body was laid. And then they returned to prepare spices and fragrant oils. That, okay, they'll rest on the Sabbath and then come back. We don't know where the eleven went. We don't know where the men were. But the next day, Luke 24, when they came, and he still says there, they and certain other women with them. Women, you have, God has given us the capacity for community. The capacity to be united, to achieve great things. And that's what the enemy keeps fighting. He keeps fighting. The women in an assembly will greatly influence the growth of that assembly. They will influence the, the success of that assembly. This also goes for any business. So yes, it may seem like women are just want to eh, gender, whatever, gender equality. Gender equality is not a, it's not a feminist thing. It's, it's not. There are a lot of things that the wisdom is in the word. Because God knows that there's something each one contributes. There's a way a man will see things. There's a way a woman will see things. And so he creates that. He created that. Imagine if there were no women in Jesus' ministry. What happened next may not have happened. They would have, angels would have had to find the way. Because they were the ones who now went in. They found out the tomb was empty. And the angel spoke to them. And the verse 8 said, they remembered his words, Jesus' words to them, that he will rise. Then they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene. It was Joanna. Are those names familiar to us? Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the disciples, to the apostles. And their words seemed to them like idle tales, and they did not believe them. There are men who have been taught to treat women and their ideas and their thoughts like idle tales. In fact, your father will tell you, how can you be listening to a woman? What have they given you to eat? You treat your wife's words like idle tales. Meanwhile, God, God is helping to balance you. 
Sometimes it's the flip side, actually. Some women, your husband that they are talking to you, and then you treat you you treat your husband as if he, he does not have sense. It's the cause. So when you find yourself behaving like that, just know that that is that is uh, the fall trying to activate itself in your home, because God did not plan for you to do coup in your home. He gave your husband the role of leadership. Thank God for Peter. But Peter arose and ran to the tomb. Peter did not treat the women like this. He went to find out. He gave them a chance. He listened. And when he went, truly, Jesus had risen. I want us to, from all the scriptures, from, from what what Jesus did, I believe he was trying to show us the wisdom of God in creation. The wisdom of God in the original order. And a lot of us are denying ourselves of God's blessings, of God's fullness. We have people in the office, some offices, they just don't, in fact, if there are women in the office, is to clean they don't some they may not say but they really don't think women it's like women are too emotional women are too emotional the fruit of the spirit brethren is not for women alone it's for us all because men are also run by their emotions and that is not God's will that is not God's plan Hallelujah. So where is our place? What's our power? Ephesians 2, 4 to 10. I just want the Bible to speak to, to us more. And I'll read verse 4. This is our place. Whether you are male, whether you are female. So long as you are in Christ, so long as you are in God. This is God's order. I love the part of the spoken word where he, she said, I first became a woman in God's hands. Adam first became a man in God's hands. Eve first became a woman in God's hands. And God took them and presented them to each other and presented them to their world. We are who we are first in God, in his hands. And the Bible says that, but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, he said he made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show that was why he created us in the first place in the beginning that he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus that's the restored order. That's the plan and purpose of God for us. Verse 10 says, We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. That is where we belong. With Christ. In Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to read one more scripture and I will be out of your face shortly. 1 Corinthians 11. I'll read verses 8 to 9. And I'm going to be reading from the Passion Translation. This is our balance of things. He says, for man was not created from woman, but woman from man. 
By the same token, the man was not created because the woman needed him. You know, some women now will not like that part. This is the word of God. The man was not created because the woman needed him. The woman was created because the man needed her. You were created because you were needed. Say to the woman seated on your seat, I am created because I am needed. I am here because I am needed. And for me, as a woman, if you're not yet married and you're trusting God, you believe, you know that you should be in a home. There is a man you were created for. There is a man that needs your help. I used to tell God, see, you know the way I am. I'm not your usual, really. I'm, I'm really, I don't, I just stereotype as it were. But I said, there's someone you have made me for. There's someone who needs what you have put inside of me. And I said, God, connect me to that person. Now, caveat, there are times God answers those prayers and you think he has not. Because honestly, I thought somebody else should be the person, especially when my husband told me he was going to be a pastor. I felt there was somebody that God had prepared for him. I did not think it was, it was me. But over time, we have both seen the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. By the same token, I'd read that. The woman was created because the man needed her. For this, okay, I'm going to skip all the head covering thing because that's not it. So, verse 11. He says, so then, this is Paul speaking. So I have to insist that in the Lord, in the Lord, neither is woman inferior to man, nor man, nor is man inferior to woman. He says, for just as woman was taken from the side of man, he says, in the same way, man is taken from the womb of woman. God, as the source of all things, designed it this way. That is the conclusion of the matter, my brethren. God, the source of all things, designed it this way. Our place is in Christ, seated with him in heavenly places, far above sin and its consequences. Our power is the power of Christ that is at work in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasures. It is not in our money, not in the what you can spend, not in what your anatomy is, not in what you can display, not in your ability to manipulate or sway people. Our power is in Christ. Let the scriptures be our mirror. Let the scriptures show you who you are and who God expects you to be to others. The fruit of the Spirit is for us all. The love of God is shed abroad all our hearts. So my dear sisters, stop hiding your light. Stop hiding your strength. Stop hiding the fact that you can do 10 things at the same time and not break a sweat. And even when you're sweating, you're still doing. That is who God created you to be. Don't be afraid of your mind and how it works. A man that has been created to... <laughs> that he has been created to need what you have. If you deem that light, he will suffer. He himself will not reach his potential because that is not the plan of God. Women, stop being humble. You know, we were taught if you are too outspoken, you are too intelligent, they won't marry you. Let's stop raising our daughters like that. Let's raise our daughters to be people who know God, people who fear God, let them find their identity in Christ. Let them not be afraid of who they are and their capacity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Men, I want to plead with you to stop hiding behind what happened at the garden. Take up your place of leadership. Take up your place of leadership. Don't treat women like they are, what do they know? If you're married and that's how you've been treating your wife, apologize to her. That woman has what you need. And it is not just about bedroom issues. 
She has the answers you need. She has the comforts you need. She has every, God has put it in her. She has the strength you need. They'll say that's why men die. You die early because you do not want to take advantage of what God has put in your life. You carry so much, you do not speak to your wives. You do not unburden. And when you do, you unburden in the wrong place. We need you people alive. We need you to mentor your sons and your daughters. It is not a woman's job. We need you to teach your children to pray. We need you to teach your wives to pray. We need when, when sometimes we get so, you know, excited and we tend to want to go over. But that's why God made you guys like that. You guys, your power of focus is amazing. You guys can just, that is why you are there, real or sin. The balance is what spells success for the body of Christ. And for the home. For wherever God has placed us. Let us show kindness to one another. Let us pray for one another. Let us forgive one another. Let us treat each other with respect. Even as we submit one to another. In Jesus name. Now I know that I... I in fact, I know I've, all the time is gone. But I'd like for us to pray. I'd like for us to pray. Can we all rise to our feet, please?